Ladies and gentlemen, school is in session. Prepare yourselves for the school of Karak. That intro and that little bit of delay always kind of throws me off my game. Good morning, Crocodilies, and thank you for being with us on this Tuesday episode of School of Croc. Now, we've done a couple of School of Croc about birds, right? The birds that live here at Gatorland that, you know, have been gifted to us, that get to live out their lives here. But today we're going to talk about a different kind of bird. Today we're going to talk about migratory birds. And so we're going to walk you through our breeding marsh, talk to you a little bit about migratory birds, as well as show you guys some amazing alligators, because that's always the best thing about Gatorland. So we're going to have our superintendent, Brandon, come over here. Hey, hey. good morning, everybody. Hi, Brandon. We're going to have Dumplin' Dottie Alderelli. Oh, oh, the, Donnie. the oh, lunch Dumplin'. lady. Hey, Dottie. And Michael Brown. Now, all Whoa, of them, Michael now, Brown, too? <laughs> these three guys know more about birds than I could ever even imagine. So I'm going to let them take it away. We're going to go down here and look at a couple little bird nests. All right, Definitely. guys, what you got? So cool. So we're out here on the breeding marsh here, okay? And the breeding marsh here at Gatorland is a 10-acre pond that was built in 1991. We came out, dug it out, built it here, and put a bunch of alligators in it. Alligators start moving around. They start swimming around, moving up on land, sunning themselves. And a lot of the vegetation, they stirred up. It started growing some more. They kind of cut it down. And then we had these birds fly what? in. Check this out right here in the nest. Oh. Zoom on in there, cameraman Dan. You're going to see one sitting. All right. Yeah. So that is what is called a tricolored heron. And the birds that are here in the breed marsh are called wading birds. So they sit in the water. They wade around. They they uh, they hunt for fish, crustaceans. But, but I have a question. Yeah. So the birds aren't afraid of the gators? They're not. So what's really cool is they live a symbiotic relationship and I'm gonna let Donnie talk a little bit about that symbiotic relationship and what the gators do. With what is the birds. a symbiotic relationship? Okay, so that's two animals that benefit from each other being in like the same area, having the same relationship. So how the birds benefit from the gators is that this bird's sitting in a tree, mm -hmm. surrounded by water, surrounded by gators. So imagine if you are, uh, let's say, a snake, right? And you want to eat a bird egg. Okay. You're not slithering through the water with all the gators up into this tree to eat that baby bird egg. So the so the, the birds benefit because the gators are like the best security system in the world that will actually eat the intruder, right? Now how the gators benefit from the birds being here is, uh, you know, Michael Brown knows a little bit more about it and what it's called, but some of the babies are uh, mean to each other. So what happens is the birds can't lay all four eggs at one time. So they'll lay one egg one week, they'll lay another egg the next week, and another egg, so on and so forth. So eventually you have four different age eggs, and they all hatch out at different times, and the bigger chick eats a bunch of food and gets really big, and if everything's good, there's no problem. But if there's not enough food, then it happens something called civil sibling, and that's where one of the siblings kicks the other sibling out of the nest. And I've been there. More room for the other siblings, and it makes more food and water for the, the two remaining siblings. Now, if it's a good year, there's no problem, and all four chicks will make it in the nest, and then it'd be great. Um, where the gators benefit is the birds get kicked out of the nest, the gators kind of get to clean up. Ah. And, and another little benefit is uh, the birds that nest in the bushes, the gators nest right underneath of them. So when you go to mess with the alligator's nest, the birds kind of defend the alligator's nest by pooping on you and throwing up fish and at you. And setting the alarm. And setting the alarm Whoa. for the gators. So, Definitely. so Definitely. the birds and the good. gators are really kind of looking out for each other I a little bit. I have a question. Sure. What, what's it called when the babies are the civil? Civil sibling. Civil sibling. Yeah. Is that kind of like when I grew up and my sister wouldn't give me the remote control to the that's, TV? That's exactly like, like that. <laughs> <laughs> me out of the living room. Survival of the fittest. Exactly. So Finn right. wants to know, Finn has a question. Do the birds do anything to keep the gators away from their nests? They really don't have to because where they put their nest is, is high enough out of the way so the gators can't actually get the birds, but they protect them. Okay. It's kind of like ADT by gator. Nice. All right, so we're not gonna stand here for long because you can see we're drawing a crowd. That's little Thrasher right there. Thrasher lives out here. I've never seen him eat a baby bird, but I'm sure he'd enjoy it. <laughs> so we're gonna keep on moving this Look way. Look at all the gators. Dan. All right, we're let's go. Walk through the 
breeding marsh and let you guys see some of the other. Uh, so this is Savannah's domain. She knows all about the breeding marsh. <laughs> she knows all these gators. You could not have a better tour guide than Savannah. So this is our tower. It's been here for 500 years from what I understand. 500 years. And then Gatorland does have the biggest bird rookery in the whole entire world. So let's say, for instance, there's some moms out there. They're letting you watch School of Croc, and you guys are having fun, and the kids are loving it. But maybe the mom doesn't, or maybe the dad doesn't like alligators or crocodiles. <laughs> if you what? love birds in the state of Florida, then you're really, especially wading birds, you're definitely relying on alligators. Because without the alligators and them making their gator holes, some of these wading birds wouldn't be able to eat. And if there's not enough alligators to make these bodies of water that these little fish and tadpoles and shrimp and whatever else get caught in, then there's not going to be any more baby birds. So if you're a bird lover, you've got to be an alligator lover. Otherwise, it doesn't really go together. Mm. Now, our breeding marsh is gigantic. It's over 10 acres. You want to tell them a little bit about it, Brandon? Definitely. So, yeah, like Savannah said, about 10 acres big, a little, just slightly over. We have about 300 alligators out here, a mixture of males and females. You guys have seen us out here feeding them before as well. And these guys just swim around freely here. Now, back in the day, there used to be a lot more vegetation than what we have that you're seeing right now. But when the alligators get in here, especially during breeding season, so and they good. want to build their nests, they dig out these little channels like this. They get up there, they sit on that vegetation, and it just kind of stomps it down. So you can but, see a little slide right here where they slide up and down. Oh, Definitely. yeah. Yep. Here, let me get in there so and you guys so can see so the birds that. came in. They built their nest, and you can even see an empty nest right here. If you pan up here, cameraman Dan, mm -hmm. there's an empty nest right there. So other birds oh. come in here. They build those nests. They'll come back to them year after year. And we have a few different species of birds, the wading birds here. We have tricolored herons. We have cattle egret, snowy egret, great egrets. There's great blue herons. We've seen some roseate spoonbills fly around. Wow. We have wood storks. So a bunch of different species of birds that fly in here. So, and, and we, now Mickey wants to know, do we have to feed and take care of these birds? We do not. These are all wild birds. So we're an outdoor park. They fly in naturally by themselves. We do not mess with them. We don't do anything with them. Just they're here for people to observe. Oh. Now, I think Craftsman is coming over to tell you guys good morning. So Craftsman <laughs> is an old alligator Craftsman. that lives here at Gatorland. But Come on, we, boy. we've trained Craftsman to talk to us. What? So cameraman Dan, I yeah, might have to good. grab your okay. uh, thing I'm for just a, a second. Let's Crash. zoom back out. Zoom back out. There you go. All right. Now, we're going to get Craftsman to talk, so don't say anything so you guys can hear it. Craftsman, come here. Craftsman, come say good morning. He gets very excited about stuff like this. And Craftsman's one of our oldest alligators, and he's definitely like a boss alligator. Craftsman, come here. Did you guys hear that? Craftsman, here. Say hello. Say hello. Let. Good job, buddy. Good job, Craftsman. Please don't let him eat my phone, Savannah. Whoa. Oh my goodness. What do, you, what do you think he was saying Whoa. this morning? I think he was saying, good morning, Savannah. I know when you come over here, you usually have a big old piece of chicken or hog for me to eat. So Savannah is kind of like a fairy tale princess when all the birds and animals come in the morning and sing with her, except... It's giant alligators and they're and growling. Yeah, yeah. She okay. Let, she needed to let down her hair. But yeah. you gotta love Craftsman. Craftsman. Craftsman is an amazing <laughs> alligator. And Craftsman's been through some serious breeding season battles and he always comes out on top. So now Brandon and Donnie and Michael are gonna take you over to where we have some live baby birds for you guys to see. And uh, you guys are gonna think they're cute as button. All right. But I think they look like little monsters. Okay. Hey, Janet wants to know that she's very impressed with your walking backwards skills. You've done very it good. from all my pageant days. We do it quite often here on the Breed Marsh, walking around here. So one of the, the best places to see these birds literally feet away from you is right here at our first little rain hut on the Breed Marsh. You're going to look in this clump of trees. Now, with the, the birds, what happens with the wading birds? So they come here every night and they nest and they roost up in the trees during the night and during the day the parents the moms and dads are going to go out to the surrounding lakes ponds rivers that might be close by and they're going to forage for food and they're going to come back 
during the night. So they'll leave the babies during the day, sometimes by themselves. Now these species is that in a baby here, over there. That is a baby walking, and that's a, that's see. an older baby. Oh. These guys are probably about uh, you know maybe uh, three to four weeks old here, and these are great egrets. That's the species that really sit in here to start. Now, the, the greater egrets were actually the first birds to start hiding. nesting here at Gatorland in 1991. There was only about four or five, a handful of nests that were in the breeding marsh. And now there's over 2,000 breeding pairs of birds in our breeding marsh. Wow. Now, what about the wood storks, Michael? Now, the wood storks, are, they're a threatened, uh, a critically endangered species. And we actually had over like 40 nests of wood storks here that last year. So I think that's pretty amazing. There's a, a, a an endangered species actually nesting and thriving here in the park. Um, they're really, really big birds. Uh, they're kind of scary. They're the hot dog stealers. If you've ever been to the park, you know that. You said big birds. Big bird. Big yep. bird. So as you notice, these babies right here are starting to kind of get a foothold uh, uh, and know their surroundings. Um, you know, they're not, uh, they don't have their soft fluffy baby What's feathers is what they, they call the nest, down baby. feathers well when they leave the nest it's called fledging and that means they get to fly and go on their own and these babies are starting to learn that now as you notice there's not there's only like one one or two adults here and as i was mentioned the adults are now out forging for food elsewhere they have food here in the water in the breeding marsh but because those alligators are there they probably want to go somewhere where it's a little safer and not too many alligators to get that food and again Time. these guys are eating crustaceans Snakes, worms, all that. Question. Wow. Yeah. A question. The parents are out getting the food. The babies are in the nest. The babies hunt down in the water? No, they stay up there. They wait for mom and dad to come back to give them food. How, with their hands? They, they don't have any hands, do so they? So how do they get food from mom so and dad? So basically what they do is they regurge that food. So what mom and dad Re eat. Show yeah. us how. So what mom and dad burgers? will eat the food. Yeah. What? And when you see mom and dad come Pretend back to the like nest, the baby babies, the baby oh, no. starts squawking wait, 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 at mom wait, wait, and dad. Wait, wait, Oh, we're not Donnie, doing this, Donnie's are we? Donnie's okay. baby bird. The babies start squawking. <laughs> they start squawking. <laughs> all right. And then mom and dad are going to take their mouths and put it over the baby. Oh, no, no. <laughs> they're gonna regurge <laughs> that food, and that's how the babies get fed. If you guys are gonna make me regurge my food until they're old enough to go out on their own and hunt for crustaceans and fish, snakes, all that stuff. So give, give yeah. me now, give me yeah. now. So oh, it's like, ah, 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 okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That's what ends up happening there. That's but great. these, this is one of the best spots to see these babies up close. As you notice, we're so close to them feet away and you see them grow up and you see them hatch out and most of these eggs are very small they're blue and it's a really amazing thing to see oh, here. I, got, I got something cool so I've been here a couple of years and uh, one of the things I've noticed I think is probably one of the coolest things is the parents will actually when the babies are fledglings and they're flying through the park they'll take their babies and they'll drop them off in different pools like the Cuban crocodile yes. pools and so the, the Cuban crocodiles are actually like babysitting these these birds. They won't eat them. I mean, the birds can fly away. And it's just crazy to think that a parent dropped their baby off in our Cuban crocodile exhibit <laughs> as a babysitter. Right? Wow. We right. actually have a video about that on our Gatorland Vlogs YouTube channel, and it's called Crocodile Daycare. Yeah. And we went all around the park when it was the season for the moms to be dropping them off, and we filmed in every enclosure that is, That's the craziest baby bird. thing. Weird. That, it's the craziest so thing. Weird. So Becky wants to know, how old are, are the birds when they wind up leaving the nest? Well, they're in the nest for about three to six weeks, depending on the different species and different types of birds. So after about three to six weeks, they're going to start fledging, hopping around. And after six to eight weeks, they're going to start flying out in the park and looking to, to go to, to gator daycare and croc daycare. Wow. So it's it's pretty amazing. So that's, that's basically the nursery over there. And then these are the, the caretakers. Right. Wow, imagine having a babysitter that looks like that. Well, and bigger, I had a babysitter and, that and, looked like that one time. That's how you turned out like this. And bigger picture is all of nature works together in harmony, from the birds to the eggs to the alligators to the snakes. And that's what we try to get through to you guys as best we can. Like, the wading birds wouldn't be here without the alligators, and the alligators definitely get rewarded for all the daycare they're doing. Um, thank you guys for being with us today. We have an exciting 3 o'clock planned for you. Not really, because we don't know what we're doing yet. But we'll figure it out as the day goes on. Cameraman Dan's going to give you guys some shout-outs. Shout-out to Ricky, Terry, Cassidy, Nolan, Elise, and Carrie. Head to the School of Croc Facebook group to see artwork by Arlie and Jeffrey. Shout-out to their sister, Heidi. Also, a cool drawing by Logan Fox. Remember to post your artwork, videos, School of Croc shirts in the School of Croc Facebook group. Say hi to us there so we can say hi to but you here. Cameraman Dan, what about... 
Ronnie, Bobby, Ricky, and Mike. If I like the girl, who cares who you like? Cool it now. You guys don't know that song? No. Oh, that's you guys that's way it. before oh, their You guys missed the 90s R&B way? I was oh, more of a glam rock, rock kind of guy. <laughs> I don't like a final countdown. That's All right, your song. guys. Well, we love you. We'll see you in the School of Croc Facebook group, and then we'll see you again today at three o'clock. Thanks for being with us, guys. You're yes, welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Birds. See you, everybody. Yeah. Guys, thank you. Thank you all for being just as excited about birds as you are about gators. Thank see you, you all tomorrow. Same Croc <laughs> time. Same Croc channel.